What's up, everybody? I hold shift here. Welcome back or welcome first time as we're going to break down the Call of Duty 2K from this last weekend. If you missed it, we'll try to wrap everything up for you. Nice little present. Put a little bow on it. So you got something to open um, Christmas Day in a month and change. <sighs> Nothing like asphalt for gift wrapping. Anywho, let's talk about what you missed out on. Again, this is your first time to the channel. Welcome. It's nice to meet you. I'm I hold shift. Aspiring commentator with a background in a number of first-person shooter games trying to kind of get my attention back into the Call of Duty community A lot of you guys were so welcoming in my first video uh, Maybe if they're really self-conscious about it initially about the video But uh, with some of your kind words and all of your guys support uh, I feel pretty confident about this So hopefully you enjoy it and again We're just gonna break down all the things that you may have missed from now all three regions as well So let's go ahead and see what are we gonna talk about today? Of course, we're gonna start things off with the most important scene when it comes to breaking down what the 2k looked like in north america as far as those standings go and then we'll actually list things out as far as overall team standings for each of the regions we'll start in asia pacific talk about eu and then we'll of course show you the full standings as the points go america now of course if you're newer to call of duty you're not 100 percent sure how these formats work you will see points listed next to team names but that doesn't necessarily mean how many points they have each of the individual players will be accumulating points and those combined together um, to boost up what is essentially the total for a team and that's how the point selections are determined so there are other ways to earn points but i do just want to let you know that what's listed on the screen will just be what they won for this week or what they've won total from the 2k tournaments cool makes sense all right sounds good let's get into it shall we first things first I'm realist, realist. we got to take a look at what happened in the na 2k and again of course the top 32 teams will be Rise now, I guess we'll call them with points, but we're mostly focused on what happened in the top 16. As you see them kind of come up from the bottom of your screen, you're going to notice a handful again of mysterious teams that you just would not expect to see down here. Phase Clan and Luminosity once again not able to get out of the bottom, but G2 also slides out of the top eight and 100 Thieves. We'll talk about why they might be down here in the bottom of the 16 pool, but they also do not make it into the quarters or beyond. The top eight, the five through eight spots, getting 600 points each. Returning back to the scene in blazing fashion is the Choo Choo Monster himself. He'll uh, come back in. Him and his squad do very well this week, getting themselves in that top eight spot. The Gold Bullets, at least that's what we called them from before. They're also listed in there. Accelerate being picked up. That's Fastball's team as he got his team picked up by an org after last week. They've also finished up there. And Team Spacely, most notably the number two team from last week, did not make it into the semis. So let's go ahead and take a look at who your top four are from this week. UIU, ooh, ooh, you. I don't know if that's the way you'd be pronouncing it. I'm sure I'll get plenty of flame if that's <laughs> not how you say. Splice, they'll make it into the semifinals but not be able to get past E United and Optic Gaming, which is where the finals would last, and E United would fall to Optic at a 3 0 scoreline. And uh, again, there are some interesting things to kind of notice as we were going through here. Most notably, let's start back and take a look at what happened with 100 Thieves. They are overall sitting in the fifth spot, which we'll see later with 1,200 total points. But this roster without Kenny this week, because he was in London for the Esports Awards. Did not fare nearly as well as obviously they did when he was there. Teddy Rex would come in. And to be honest, even when Kenny was here, they were having a very difficult week scrimming. There was a lot of posts on the Reddit. And if anyone was watching Kenny's streams, there was a lot of aggressiveness being thrown around between younger players. So it makes you kind of wonder what could possibly happen in the future. And of course, without Kenny, they couldn't even take more than a map from Team Killa got to figure that one out this is a lot of a team with a lot riding on it when it comes to the expectations so, i mean again it is just an online tournament they are playing without kenny but still one of those things that you kind of have to take a look at and say what went wrong how about these new guys though uyu or uyu nova proto mayhem skies and spoof they didn't really have the hardest bracket ever but they did place obviously very well but the biggest thing was they had very impressive performances versus accelerate gaming and they were able to take a map off of optic as well who did not look as strong as they did the week before but the fact of the matter is you still take a, a map off of what are the current trendsetters you have to think that you'd be feeling pretty good about it especially with the bonus 800 points coming through but of course the biggest story after e united had themselves uh, a semi-final fallout last week they come back looking super strong this week and they had an insane bracket to go through literally had to take down 
There are the Davids to everyone's Goliaths. There are there are three of them, four of them. They had to fight their way through a, a jungle of ravenous lions. I I don't know, but they had to go through Envy, G2, Team Killa, and Splice before meeting Optic in the finals. By far the hardest path that any team had to go through. It was a, a really fun one to watch from all of their perspectives. Uh, you know, all the guys there, Clayster, Jcap, Arcides, Rustini, and Abizi. But my goodness, after a week that was, for me when I was watching it, a, a tough week of scrims for a lot of teams, um, this was the one team that really looked like they were the most consistent coming through, and it obviously showed up when it came to Saturday, or sorry, pardon me, not Saturday, when it came to Sunday and Monday. So, hey, good looks for you, United. You know, it's interesting, though, because you take a look at, you know, LG and FaZe not getting up to the top eight, but also Envy not making it to the top 16 again, and as well, Evil Genius is not even making it to the top 32. Makes you wonder what's going on there. Envy actually had good scrims, I thought, most of the week when I was watching Apathy play, and it just did not really show up. They had some struggles throughout a lot of their earlier round brackets before they got into their matchup versus United, so, oof. There's a lot of things looking uh, a little bit shaky. Of course, that's a team that you have to figure is going to be able to turn itself right side up. Let's take a look at the standings, though, because that's the next thing that we want to make a look at as we go through. We'll start things over in Asia Pacific. Painted Minds and Mind Freak after round one or week one, I guess you could say, the 2K. They were the top two teams, rather considerably. A couple of other names that are popping into the mix, but of course, everyone's taking a look at APAC. If you are looking at APAC, it's because of Tainted Minds. They would be the number one seed, but this week they actually flip flop with Mind Freak. So Tainted Minds and Mind Freak will actually have themselves both at 3,200 total points technically. When you look at the team standings, ARM right below them is sitting in the third spot. Obsidian also in the fourth, moving themselves through. And a couple other teams that showed up and did mostly the same that they did the week. Let's go over to Europe though, because there were some interesting things going on over there. Most specifically. You take a look at what was going on in the first week after the fourth. Team Sween was looking super good. Team 3G recently just picked up as well. That's a team to kind of keep an eye on as you move forward. But of course, Red Reserve and Reciprocity were the two names that everyone was keeping their eyes on. They did not really perform all that well. They drew for the five through eight spot. But then this week coming up, this was interesting. Red Reserve wasn't present this week, and there's a couple of rumor mills why, potentially, that they're moving to North America. But the other side of things was Reciprocity would not be able to find any success against Heretics KFC. Yes, the Spanish team rolls through, and they find themselves the win this week as they run the table. So that'll boost them up nice and pretty as you look at the standings as they pan out on the after the 11th. And Gone Gaming slips a little bit. Devious stays pretty consistent. The big thing was the fact that Team Sween was not able to get themselves the same repeat that they were looking for, obviously, from the time previously. You switch back over, and now, of course, you want to look at what's the most important. What's going on in North America? And this is the one that everyone wants to know, of course. How could you not? And as you take a look at what the standings were after the first week, of course, Optic up top. Space Lease team was right there in the number two slot. And of course, 100 Thieves also in that tied spot up a little bit higher for that 3-4. And then as you take a look to the 11th, a lot of switches coming in. Not so drastic, not like Europe was. But you will see United boop up to the second spot technically. Optic obviously still on top with their 4,000 points. But also you take a look at G2 slipping a little bit. Phase Clan and Luminosity barely squeaking into our... Graphically top 12 accelerate keeping their spot as well. So these are it's been an interesting week to say the least And again, if you're kind of just looking at this for the first time Definitely watch some of the streams because there were a lot of teams that really stood out to me this week Especially through scrims 100 thieves did not look like what you would expect 100 thieves to look like I thought envy looked really good and they didn't look good at all when it came to tournament time and then eg What's going on with them? Geniuses, I mean, they pick up a roster that, you know, is five dudes, and yeah, they're they're good players, but they're just not putting anything together. There's visible frustration, and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of care right now in the team. Just saying. It just kind of just looks like they're a little complacent. The grind is not quite there. Similar story for Luminosity, I think, as well, as you watch them kind of get smoked out of this too. So it's just kind of questions of who's going to put the time in, who's going to really be able to come together as a team, because I think at this point, there's a lot of frustrations when it comes to things that are not necessarily banned, but teams are trying to GA with one another when it comes to their scrims or potentially tournaments. And there's just a lot of frustrations with the game as they're learning it. So 
it comes down to me of who can build that chemistry up who can adjust to having another dude on the roster let's be real it's different going from 4v4 to 5v5 optic obviously showing that but united i'm really impressed i think they made a really good showing this week there's a lot of confidence that they can be building off of it going through all of those big names as they went through their tournament literally from two rounds their top 64 game all the way into finals was against a, a really solid team they handled just about everybody but of course optic so beyond that as we look into next week i'm most excited to see if any of these teams that have been performing consistently will be picked up by orgs there's also the rumor mill of possibly red reserve and reciprocity flipping from eu and moving to na okay so that could be an eye-opening experience i think for the uk and the united kingdom boys we'll just call them the united kingdom boys because they're pretty much all from the english isles but regardless it's been fun having you guys thanks so much i've been shift we'll be back with these weekly so if you're looking to get caught up make sure you stop on by and if you have any again thoughts concerns any other things that you think i might have missed on well hey leave them down in the comments i'll be happy to get back to you hopefully we'll talk to you guys next time until then have yourselves a good week bye bye